my family was, in some senses, royalty in the occult. We had a real pure bloodline that everybody in my family had been priests or priestesses, and I was to take over that position. I had been chosen to take over that position. Glenn, can you explain the different purposes of ritualistic abuse to children? This was part of the, the systematic thing that they were doing. They were trying to, 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 to make all my feelings towards blood, towards abuse, towards all these things seared so that I had no, no type of emotional response to it whatsoever. Now, when I saw the blood of the animals that were cut, and, and most of the time they would hold the animal over me and, and they'd slit its throat, and the blood would drip down over my body and you know I was nude and then they would force me to do sexual acts and then we'd be passed around to the different uh, cult members and they would uh, have sexual relations with us I think at the time that it was happening I was just so the thought that was going through my mind was I was just so happy that it wasn't me that had got my throat slit as a teenager, you grew into another category of Satanism. Can you explain what happened? I began to pray to Satan, and I began to say, take over my life, you know, make me your high priest. All these things that somehow I knew that had been ingrained in me as a child were coming back to me as a teenager. And I made that blood contract with Lucifer. I uh, had slipped my wrist and, made, and wrote out a a parchment between me and Lucifer and after that I completely changed I became more like a priest more more active in my life very rebellious I began to excel academically I began to excel in every area of my life most of the rituals I performed as a uh, teenager were animal rituals I didn't perform any human sacrifices because the the spirit guides and the demons that were in my life at that time were instructing me that until I initially came into the coven and took over the position as the high priest, that that was when I would perform human sacrifice. And I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to my first human sacrifice. Glenn, how did you get out of Satanism? I was having some trouble in an English class, and they assigned a tutor to me. It was a little old Christian woman. And for the first time in my life, I was confronted with something that was bigger than me and bigger than Satan. I walked into that room, and that little lady, a little old lady, was sitting there, and there was this holy light that was around her, I could see it. And the demons that were in my life that always went with me, they never left me, they never, left, they never let me make a decision by myself. They instructed me in every area of my life who were always with me 24 hours a day. The minute I walked into that room, they were gone. They left. I was left completely vulnerable to this woman. I was infuriated. I was so mad because I was threatened by a Christian. And it just, it just shook everything that I believed in for a moment. And she began to share with me Jesus Christ in a new way that I had never learned before. She told me that Jesus loved me. I had no concept of love. Love to me was something you took. It was something you used to get what you wanted. She told me something that has stuck with me all my life. She said, Glenn, Jesus became a sacrifice for you willingly. Now as a Satanist, I knew everything about sacrifice. I knew what it was like to see people be sacrificed. And none of them were willing to do it. And I said, okay, Jesus, if you're up there and you really died for me, you sacrificed yourself for me, you know, you were stupid. You were stupid to do that. I mean, why would you do something like that? I, if, if you're God and you're so real, prove it to me. Prove it. 
So I clenched my fists and I closed my eyes and I stood there waiting for something to happen. I thought, you know, if he's God, he's going to move the earth or there's be a bright light or, or something, you know. But God threw me a curveball. He did something that I would have never expected. He moved past all the Satanism. He moved past all the hurt. He moved past all those icy walls. He reached in with his loving hand, reached around my cold heart, and poured into me a love that I had never felt since I was a little boy. I never knew what it was like to be loved. I never knew what it was like to be taken in my mother's arms or my father's arms and to say, I love you. I, I'm going to protect you.